Hi, hello there. Welcome to the Ramadan Stories, the second segment of the three-hour news show. And during the holy month of Ramadan, Muslim world partake in activities that are useful and full of impacts for themselves and others. And according to the Muslim 500 webpage, there are at least 1.94 billion Muslims in the world. That figure can make a change and have significant impact. One of them comes from a community organization called Green Muslim. So let's find out more about the community. Green Muslim is a volunteer-driven community-based organization that connects Muslim to raise nature and environmental awareness. The organization is headquartered in Washington, D.C. and hosts educational service and outdoor recreational events. Their vision talks about the lives of Muslims in the environmental spirit of Islam that can make an impact. And here with us today is Green Muslim Executive Director. I don't want to butcher your name here, so I'm just going <laughs> to say it. Sevim Kalyong Chu. Did I say it right? You did. All you right. Did. Congratulations, Yadi. Hi, Hi, Sevim. How are you? I am very excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank, yeah, thank you, you so much. much. you coming directly to our studio. <laughs> Directly from um, Washington DC, but then you you were in Surabaya. Am Surabaya I right? was my first stop, and I mm -hmm. talked with a lot of groups and had a, had a few interviews there and, mm -hmm. and here. And I'm 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 asleep basically <laughs> because I've been awake for so many hours. I feel like I'm in a wonderful dream. It's it's so nice to be here. Yes. <laughs> All right. So could you tell us more about Green Muslims? I was looking at through your website. Uh, it's been since 2015. So 2007 actually. Oh my God. So, okay. I think Actually, I read the 2007. Wrong. So, right. a lot of people um, that interact with me and Green Muslims think that it's my organization because I'm, I'm so incredibly passionate about it. But actually, mm -hmm. I've been with the Green Muslims for over five years now as the executive director. Mm -hmm. But I can say that I knew the founding members. Mm -hmm. So, I, my family's been in the Washington, D.C. metro area, as we call it, for a very long time. But I had moved to the West Coast for several years. I moved back in 2008 and Green Muslims already existed. In okay. 2007, um, a group of young professionals, uh, they were single, Muslim American, probably in their first jobs in Washington, DC, uh, and it was Ramadan. So it's actually the anniversary of the founding oh. of Green Muslims. They wanted to have an iftar together, yep. um, but they wanted it to be good for the environment. So they wanted to have an iftar outdoors, the mm -hmm. weather, allowed it at the time. Um, it's actually been colder this Ramadan. <laughs> uh, and they wanted to not use plastic or right. styrofoam or any disposable plates or, or utensils. And they also wanted to not waste food. So this was a no waste iftar, mm -hmm. but specifically because they didn't want to waste food, they encouraged participants to bring what we call leftovers. Oh. Food from the night before, oh, okay. put in the refrigerator. So they called it a leftar. So left a leftover oh, like iftar. <laughs> and uh, when I joined Green Muslims, I would brag about this leftar, and I, I, I learned that in some cultures, that's kind of unacceptable to be bringing old food to an right. iftar. But you know, in the United States of America, we are okay with it. <laughs> so that was when the first no waste lift leftar occurred back in 2007, and the group continued for a while. I moved back in 2008 and actually hosted one of those mm -hmm. iftars, mm -hmm. but little did I know that uh, many, many years later, after I became a mother and changed careers and needed a new job, that I would actually run the organization. Right. So oh. interesting. I think it's okay here in Indonesia uh, also if you bring the leftovers. Left 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 <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> and actually, maybe you can tell again, um, uh, what is the main mission of a Green Muslim actually? By so, Green Muslims has evolved over time, of course, but it was, it's still one of very few uh, environmental, Muslim environmental organizations mm -hmm. in the United States. There are others, but it was one of the earlier ones. So there were multiple goals to get Muslims to care more about the environment, yeah. to get Muslims to uh, interact with nature more. Right. And today we say, you know, our mission, the words are going to be on the website more clearly, but it's to help Muslim Americans, and after this trip I'm starting to think more globally, yeah. um, to connect with nature at a spiritual level and then to care for it as, as the true um, stewards of the earth, as Islam actually teaches that we are. We talk about the word Khalifa as it's used in the Quran. 
Khalifa can be translated, and Khalifa, mankind, humankind are the Khalifa, all people are the Khalifa. We were placed here by God to be that role. That can be translated as steward. Right. So we're, we're, we're emphasizing that Islam teaches yeah. that we were placed here to be stewards of the earth. We need to care for the environment, so we need to be aware of the problems and, and deal with global warming and be activists for the climate. But also, we emphasize how the Quran says that there are ayah, there are signs yeah. throughout the heavens mm -hmm. and the earth. Yeah. And so we also need to connect with nature at a personal, spiritual level and uh, maybe in doing so become closer to God and to our faith. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting the concept, yeah, with the spiritual level, uh, connecting with the nature. All right, so but if we're talking about Great Muslim Alone, so you said um, it started in 2007. Can you tell us how many members you have up until now? Uh, it's not really a member-based organization. Oh, okay, so. so we have, first it was just a volunteer organization. To, right. In fact, until, until I came around, it was yeah. a volunteer organization. It was run by its board of directors. These were all people who had other jobs, other, other lives. And generally, they would step down when they got married ah, okay. <laughs> and became too busy. That's the nature of a voluntary organization. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I joined when I was a mother. <laughs> so something had to change quickly. Right. And um, I'm not much of a fundraiser. I don't like asking people for money. Mm -hmm. But I, I had a lot of writing experience previously. And so I applied for a lot of grants for specific programs mm -hmm. so that we not only could uh, have the program, but also pay staff members, if only yeah. part-time staff members, yeah. to carry it out. And so the organization has grown a lot because of that. And then also, just in recent years, honestly, I call it the silver lining of COVID, Muslims are more interested in nature and the environment right now. And so we've been getting a lot more work. We're interacting with local communities. In fact, one of my, my, my favorite partnerships yeah. has been with the Indonesian mosque oh. in Maryland. Um, they are doing amazing things. They planted uh, a, a rain garden, mm. a garden of native plants, plants that belong in this, that region that helps control flooding and erosion, water control, and we've taken them out on hikes, and mm. I've given talks to the kids about how cool nature is and why we were, the things I'm saying now, why we were placed <laughs> here to take care of it. And I bring them things to, to, to handle and observe, but we love interacting with that community. Yeah, I think it's always good to teach kids, right? right. Like you have, you have to uh, care about the environment, you care about nature. You just have to start them young and that's what you guys are doing. I mean, this is a personal opinion, but I think it's easier to work with kids than with adults. <laughs> there are a lot of awesome, really great adults out right. there who want to do great things, but the kids, you can influence them. Yeah. Right. Maybe they hadn't thought about it this way before, but you yeah. bring the idea in and you make it fun. Right. And it will, you know, if kids grow up, not being afraid of nature, of animals and plants and right. woods, forests, jungle. If they're yep. not afraid of it, instead they see it as fun and cool, they're gonna care about it. That's right. And then they will be stewards of the environment. And that's, that's what I like to focus on personally. So what kind of activities do you do with the kids? So I think I was particularly interested in taking this position with Green Muslims because of one aspect of the organization. We have, um, a program that was developed before I joined, but, but uh, very unique to green Muslims, called Our Dean is Green, Youth Outdoor Education Program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the color green is so appropriate in this subject area. Green represents Islam, but yeah. green also represents the environment, so green Muslims is the perfect name for us. Well, green and dean rhyme in English, <laughs> <laughs> so right. it's even more cool. Um, but in our Dean is Green, we take the children, and since I've come on board, I've taken parents along with us, so they get the lesson as well, but we take them outside in our local area. And we live in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, so mm -hmm. going into the Atlantic Ocean is the Chesapeake Bay, and then all these rivers flow into it. The watershed is the area where all the water eventually flows into the, that, that bay. Yeah. And, um, any impact we have on the land is going to impact the water and it's all interconnected. And I, I don't know about others, but I didn't learn about this when I was in school. This is a new concept to me too. As a naturalist educator, I teach it a lot, but I learned it as a professional. I didn't, I didn't get these classes in school. Right. And it turns out a lot of um, kids still aren't learning it. So we take whoever signs up for the program yep. out to a farm or into a park or the woods and we talk about this and we connect it to Islam. Right. 
So it is a pair. Uh, I mean, it's fascinating that Green Muslim uh, as well provide a special tab on your website about uh, Green Scripture. Uh, yes. Yes, which compiles the Quranic <laughs> verses. We need that actually. Yes. yes. And the, uh, that relates to our environment, especially nature. <laughs> so, how is uh, this tab initiated, and where did the inspiration come from? So when I joined, there actually was a page on our old web, uh, website, which we completely redid. And it just listed the names of the verses and a few lines. And it was, it was difficult to read. And I also noticed that the translations were not Correct. noted. Well, oh. we didn't know. I mean, again, the original mm -hmm. is in Arabic. Yeah. In the United States, most of us can't read it for the meaning. And we have many, many translations now. But there are differences in those translations because Arabic is such a rich language yeah. that there are many different meanings, English meanings, within one Arabic word. Khalifa, for example. Yeah. Mm. I had been taught as a child it meant vicegerent. I didn't know what a vicegerent was, so I'm not going to try to explain it. It's not a commonly used English word, but one of the English translated Qurans referred to the Khalifa as the vicegerent. Well, Khalifa also means steward. So if we are the Khalifa fil ard, we are the stewards of the earth. Well, it helps to know which, which translation mm -hmm. you're taking. Um, and I asked, we had an, a, an amazing intern a couple of years ago who was a PhD candidate in Islamic mm. studies. So she was incredibly knowledgeable already and very good with the research. I told her, oh, we need to redo this list and I don't have time to do it. She did much more than what we had before. Now we have multiple translations, the exact sources um, of different, and she arranged it by topic. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find a verse dealing with the air or with nature, with land, with, with yeah. our responsibility, you can check our website and see it there. But it's mostly Quranic verses. There are also a lot of hadith that refer to how we should be treating plants and animals. Mm -hmm. And we're not bothering with that because there's now a book out called 40 Green Hadith, which has been translated into Indonesian oh. um, that people can look for online that um, a partner organization yeah. uh, put together. So there are sources out there if you need English translation. Yeah, we need well, to. Well, now, now it's in I will show it to my, my children. Yeah. <laughs> Green Muslim always open for internship? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take all the interns I can get <laughs> if you're willing to work for free. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so does Green Muslim have any vision to expand its initiative overseas, yeah. including Indonesia? <laughs> After your here, journey, right? you've, you're, you've been thinking about this, right? After the journey, yes. <laughs> it's just been so amazing being here and having these conversations with, with others who have similar mindsets and want to do something. I was talking with a, with a women's group yesterday and they want my support. I want their support. So we need to build these partnerships and bridges internationally. Now, since I came to Green Muslims, I've tried to focus locally because I like taking people outside yeah. but the question kept arising are we a national organization well if there was any question before mm -hmm. since COVID and all the use of zoom mm -hmm. not only are we a national organization we are an international organization yeah. we're working with we're being invited all across the globe mm -hmm. and this time in person but oftentimes uh, virtually and people want to work with us or they want a chapter of green Muslims where they are and so it, it will take a lot of work, but if we can do it, I think we should. It doesn't, there are other organizations too, and I don't mean to you know, uh, say that we're the only one that matters. Mm -hmm. I'm glad there are more green Muslim organizations out there, but if people want to work with green Muslims and we can find the time and the energy to do it, mm -hmm. inshallah, we will, we will try our best. Oh, yeah. We will wait for the uh, Indonesian chapter of Green Muslim. Well, I also want to come back to Indonesia yeah. anyway, so we better <laughs> get something started. Yeah. Yes. So I can come back here. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, uh, before we talk further with Sevim, we have to take a break. So stay with us right here on a three-hour news show on C Today. Don't go anywhere.